Welcome to Roll for Crit. My name is Jonathan, and I am here to present to you my rankings of the graphic novel adventure series books published in the United States by Van Ryder Games. This is a series of choose your own adventure style books. You will be taking on the roles of different characters, going through different adventures, different settings, fantasy, sci fi, horror, what have you, uh, flipping between panels, trying to solve riddles and mysteries. Some of them have stats and and more role-playing style elements involved. Some of them have you keeping an inventory. I'm a big fan of the series overall. I really love seeing this kind of narrative, interactive fiction in the tabletop gaming realm. As of now, there are three seasons, uh, which include a total of 15 different books, plus one bonus one, which we'll get to. And you might be concerned if you're looking into these as to which ones you should look at first, which ones you want to buy, or maybe you're already a fan and you just want to compare and see how I feel about the books versus how you feel. This is what I'm doing with this video. I'm going to be ranking all of the currently available books from the first three seasons uh, as I enjoyed them. And if you're watching this right when the video goes live, you will have the opportunity to try to win a copy of the entire season three box set. So stay tuned for details at the end of the video to find out more about that. Starting my list off, I am going to single out two books that I feel are very different from the rest of the graphic novel adventures that are currently published here. And I'm putting these in a tier all to their own that I'm calling Not For Me. And those books are uh, Your Town and Your Theme Park. So these are not bad books per se, although technically they're at the bottom of my list. They're just not for me. I'll give you the rundown. Uh, both follow a similar pattern. In your town, you are setting out in the Wild West trying to establish your own settlement. You're given an entire map to play around with, and as you progress through the story, uh, you will be populating that map with new buildings and going on adventures to try to find new ways to purchase more land and uh, hire people to help you work the land, uh, things like that. Uh, and your theme park, kind of the same idea, only instead of the Wild West, you are building your own theme park, hence the title. Uh, so you're visiting other theme parks, you're trying to uh, figure out what rides would work best at your park, get gift shops, things like that. This one also has a two-player mode, where if another player has a copy of the book, uh, you can play kind of alongside each other and do things like spy on each other's plans and uh, purchase ways to sabotage them, which is kind of interesting. These books are far more involved than any of the other ones in terms of the amount of stuff you need to keep track of. Uh, you really can't just play these like hanging out on the couch. You have to have a piece of paper ready, have pencils, be taking notes about your inventory, the amount of money you have, all these kinds of things, which is cool. I dig that idea, but for me personally, I don't really love that in the form of these books. It's not exactly my cup of tea. If you're into kind of sim building games, like a Sim City, something like that, this might these might be your favorite books of the whole series, I think. But they're just not quite for me. I would give the nod of the two to your theme park. I think the art style is more colorful, more fun, more engaging overall than your town. Uh, but that is my not for me list. Next, we'll move into my actual rankings, not just a cop-out tier. The D tier, books that I think just aren't really very good. They missed the mark in some ways. Uh, first up is this one called Hold Up. Now, I actually love the premise of this book. The idea is that you are a wannabe criminal, and you are just starting out in the world of crime. Uh, so you are kind of being mentored by a criminal who's better than you. And you're going out trying to take on different heists. So uh, you have kind of a headquarters and you can choose to visit a bank or a jewelry shop or a lot of different places. There's actually a pretty varied map and it almost feels like it's open world experience. Uh, there's also a, a great art style, I think and a great sense of humor. And overall, like the vibe of it reminded me of uh, the Grand Theft Auto video games. And I think that's really fun. This is definitely, definitely the, I think the most mature oriented book. It's got a lot of violence. I mean, you are just going around stealing things and shooting people. So not one for the kids. Where it falls flat for me 
is so many of the heists rely on you have I, to me having like some kind of psychic knowledge about what you're going to need because before each one you're allowed to take certain inventory items with you and you just have to guess you just have to say a oh, jewelry store maybe i'll need a, a mask maybe i'll need a big bag to carry the jewelry in so that's what i should take and sometimes you can guess right based on that but i found more often than not it just said oh you didn't bring this one item with you well too bad leave, you're done, go back to base, or you're dead, <laughs> you got shot. I found it punishingly difficult to the point where I just didn't find it that fun. Uh, but maybe if you can look past the actual, you know, objectives and success, you might have fun just reading through it, because I, I do like the idea of it. The other one that I'm placing in this D tier is Pirates the Great Chase. This is the first in multiple pirates books that are published uh, under this line. Uh, and the premise of this one is that you're trying to find this prisoner that you had on your pirate ship, track them down. So you've tracked that you've brought them to this island and you have to hunt down all through this island, try to figure out where they went, talk to people, solve riddles in order to recapture them. So you're a pirate. You're kind of you're kind of an anti-hero. Uh, you're not really a good guy in this book. My problem with it is there are a lot of stretches in this book where there are no people. There's no dialogue. There's not. There's no real puzzles to solve. There's some of that, but a lot of it is just, hey, look at this forest area and these trees, and try to guess if you should go left or right. And then it'll lead you to a different area. And sometimes I ended up going in circles and not even realizing it because so many of the panels just look the same. Uh, and I found it pretty boring after like four or five times wandering this island without much to do. There's a couple of areas of interest, but overall I wasn't a fan of this book. Maybe I'm just not that good at navigating it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it has its place in my D tier. Moving up to the C tier, these are books that I think are fine. Uh, they don't do anything bad, really, but they don't do anything that, in my mind, makes them stand out in a significant way. And we'll start off by talking about another Pirates book. This one is actually the third, and technically there is a through line between all three of them. Uh, they do have a pattern if you play through them in order. There are some things that carry over, actually, like your inventory, but... You don't really need to play them. It's just kind of a little Easter egg if uh, if you're into that kind of a thing. Uh, the third book, I think, is a little bit better than the second. In this one, you're on an island of people who have been cursed to uh, look like animals. They've been turned into animals. So you have to try to figure out what caused this curse. It's kind of more of a mystery-solving vibe, very different from, from the other books. Uh, you're, you're trying to s solve these clues and figure out uh, what happened, which I thought was a cool premise. I did end up kind of in this one too, going around in circles a lot and banging my head against the wall, trying to solve some of these riddles and figure out what it all means and who caused what and how do I get into that house? I don't know, but nonetheless, kind of a fun premise. Uh, next up in this one, I also have two different Sherlock Holmes books. So there are a few of these Sherlock Holmes books in the series, uh, and they all kind of follow Sherlock and Watson usually solving a series of cases together via you, the player, actually the one doing that, and trying to figure out the culprits of them, etc. And usually there are some hidden things in the panels that you're trying to find along the way to help you get a better score before Sherlock tells you the best way to do it and makes you feel miserable about yourself. Um, it's fun. I like them. Overall, I like them. Uh, in this category, I have uh, Jack the Ripper. Uh, this is one of the more straightforward ones of the books. Some of them have, you know, multiple cases. This one is really just Jack the Ripper, although there are kind of two chapters to it. Uh, and while I enjoyed the mystery, and I mean, Jack the Ripper is an interesting subject, I did think this one was a little more linear and a little easier than all of the other ones. Ironically, I think would be kind of good for younger players in terms of its difficulty, except that it's all about Jack the Ripper and his grisly murders. So <laughs> um, in, in light of that, not actually the best thing to give to kids. The other one that I've got here is Sherlock Holmes' The Beginning. Now, technically, this is actually going to be part of the upcoming season four 
from Van Ryder Games. They had it offered as kind of a bonus book from some of their Kickstarters, uh, but the future set is going to include this. So this is my 16th book that technically overlaps with season four, even though officially this is just a ranking of the first three seasons. This one is interesting because it's thicker than all the other books. It's 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 got a lot more pages in it. And that led me to believe when I looked at it that this was going to be a really long and involved mystery. But in practice, I found it to be one of the most straightforward. Uh, I think a lot of those extra pages are there for story context. There are more panels where you're just kind of um, reading along with the story and getting to know the characters better and not flipping back and forth between different panels all the time, which is cool and nice because it means you get to feel a little more of that narrative in Sherlock Holmes. So those are fun characters everybody is familiar with. Uh, but because it just feels... Uh, to me, a little too simple, a little too straightforward, and it, it just lasted me not nearly as long as some of the other Sherlock books, so I thought it was just okay. Moving on to the B tier now, these are books that I thought were pretty good overall, and that includes two more Sherlock Holmes books. I told you there were a bunch of these, uh, so we'll, we'll start with Sherlock Holmes' The Challenge of Irene Adler. In this one, you play not as Watson, but as Sherlock and or Irene. Uh, and this is one where you can also play it with two players if you want. And one person actually uh, looks at the book as Irene, then they pass it back to the other player as Sherlock. And you can kind of see who can solve the mystery first or compare notes together if you want, which is a novel concept, a graphic novel concept that I think is... Uh, a kind of a fun thing, although I don't know in practice how well it actually works. Uh, but I enjoyed the mystery in, in this one. There's some interesting there's some interesting clues to find. This this is definitely I think a better developed, deeper mystery in this book uh, than the ones that were established in the other two that I talked about. And the same goes over here for Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. Uh, this one once again teams Sherlock up with someone different his arch nemesis Moriarty, who you can play as now, and he has a bit of a, a more aggressive approach to solving crimes, which is which is kind of interesting. This one also has a different art style uh, from the other Sherlock books, which gives it a, a bit of a different vibe. You know, it's up, up to your subjective tastes if, it's, if you care for that one or not. Um, and uh, I like this one. It's got a big train theme. You're on a train a lot of the time trying to solve mysteries and who doesn't love a classic train mystery, going from car to car, interviewing people, getting to the bottom of things? Uh, but, of course, there are some diversions along the way as well, so that's a lot of fun. I think that both of those have some really solid uh, mystery elements in them, and I enjoyed the uh, interplay between the two different styles of characters that are included. Tears of a Goddess I'm including in this tier as well. Uh, in this one, you're this cool bounty hunter and you have to recover uh, these mythical tears that have been stolen. Uh, and so it's it's got a cool vibe, I think. It's definitely in the vein of some kind of classic point-and-click adventure games where you're finding items along the way that you can use, like a smoke bomb or various weapons. You also choose different specialties in this one. So you can specialize in uh, disguise or weapons, for example. You choose that at the start of the book, and that's going to inform how the rest of your journey goes. Uh, so that adds a little bit of replayability. You can try to see, oh, which one is more my style, or how can I win with uh, this specialty versus a different specialty. Uh, I, I enjoyed the artwork in this one a lot as well. The art and the theme, I think, uh, kick it up a notch for me, although the story isn't really like super deep. The characters aren't that compelling, uh, but it's a fun kind of world to inhabit. And the same goes for the other one that I have in this tier, Mystery. This one is a superhero-themed book. You're a new superhero being trained. You want to be accepted by the other League of Superheroes. Uh, this one is very goofy, much more of a parody, kind of in the vein of The Incredibles, something like that. Uh, certainly the art style is a little reminiscent of, of that movie, I think. And it has some uh, some cool gamey aspects to it, almost in a, a Metroidvania way, where you're going to be doing some backtracking and coming back to areas once you have different abilities unlocked. You'll be able to put points into different superpowers. So if you put a lot of points into super into flight, maybe you'll be able to cross a long gap in one section, whereas you 
would have to find a different way if you didn't have that power. I thought that was a, a pretty fun idea. There's also some stuff in this one that involves uh, QR codes you can scan with your phone and get more information from, which, I don't know, you don't really need it. It doesn't add that much to the book, but it's kind of a cool idea, and I like when they try to add stuff like that. Next up is the A-tier books that I really, really like very, very much, beginning with Lily Van Helsing, wherein you play as... I assume the daughter of Van Helsing, although I'm not sure if that's ever made explicit in the book. I can't recall. Uh, but you're a young girl who hunts monsters. A, a very Buffy the Vampire Slayer-esque and similar kind of sense of humor, I would say. Uh, this one has a few different kind of missions that you can go on, taking on different types of monsters. Each one has their own challenges uh, and almost like little mini objectives that you want to complete before they all come to a head at the end of the book. Uh, I really liked it. It's not the toughest one. Uh, it's not the lengthiest one, but I am a big fan of the genre, this kind of fun action horror vibe that this one gives off. And there are some cool power ups and items that you can acquire along the way. Fun, funny, a good time for all ages. <laughs> Lily Van Helsing. Also in the A tier is Sherlock Holmes. For Investigations, this was the first Sherlock Holmes book published in the U.S., and it's still my favorite, although to be honest, it could maybe swap on some days with the other two that I have in the B tier. Eh, it just depends on how you feel maybe about the individual mysteries, but maybe partially because this was the first one that I played, it left an impression on me. I really like the style of it. I think the art is very fun and cute. Uh, they have these fun little interpretations of Sherlock and Watson that feel cartoony, but not it's not too goofy. There's still, you know, murder and other weighty topics and mysteries for you to solve. And some of those mysteries are tough to solve. And sometimes there's one-off riddles. Sometimes you have to really piece together clues from various crime scenes and things. Uh, you have to, of course, interrogate suspects. That's a thread throughout all of the Sherlock Holmes books, is making sure you're asking the right questions and keeping track of what's important about what the suspects say. It's a kind of uh, book and game that I really enjoy. Uh, and this one, I think, uh, maybe just by a little bit, still does it better than the other Sherlock books. And then finally in the A tier, there is redemption at last for the Pirates series because I have Pirates, the City of Skulls in my A tier. This is the middle book, the second book of the three that are out. Uh, so uh, a, a bit of a, a bit of a weird situation. I think you could jump right into this and be fine. You don't need to play the other two. Uh, like I said, there are some through lines that are kind of fun Easter eggs, but nothing that serious. But the reason I think this one is a lot better, and this one you are on an island that has a thriving city. So it's almost the opposite of the first Pirates book, which seems like this desolate island with just a couple of villages and things here and there. This one is a big bustling city. You are going all around exploring shops, talking to everybody you can see, uh, trying to find weird paths, items, and clues. And I found it very immersive. I thought it, it felt very alive. Every page, every panel uh, has something going on. There's some very creative mysteries. There's also an option to be a bad pirate or a good pirate. And some things that you do, you kind of have like a morality system that will change uh, which paths you can take. So there's some replay value for you there if you want to try playing as a different type of pirate. You'll, you'll get like a whole different set of puzzles really throughout most of the book. So this one is cool. I think it has a lot to do. Uh, it's cute. It's funny. Who doesn't like pirates? This one gets it the best out of the three. Finally, that brings me to my S-tier rankings, the best of the best, the creme de la creme. And for this one, I reserve the two books that I think are deserving of the top spots out of the first three seasons so far. Uh, both of them, in fact, come from the first season. And the first one is Lou Garou, which is about you as a guy who becomes a werewolf and you gotta deal with it. Uh, and this one I like because I think it keeps closer than any of the other ones to kind of a classic role-playing style of game. You have a whole skill tree that you can upgrade as you go. There is combat uh, that even can involve dice rolling as you play. Uh, so it has this fun 
old school fantasy vibe uh, that I really liked exploring and a lot of riddles as well that I thought are, I, I always enjoy a good riddle in a book. I think that's a, a fun way to have you solve a puzzle and think about something that's not just like a, you know, a math puzzle. Cause I don't like math. I like words with riddles. Um, a lot to explore. There's again, different paths you can take. You might, you might die. Then you'll try again. You'll try a different way to go. I think this was, this is, this was the first book that I played in the series. And I think it's a great introduction to the world. Uh, like some of my favorite other ones, I think what it gets right is really feeling like a living, breathing place that you're exploring, which I think is a cool magic trick to pull off. And then the last one, uh, that I'm putting also in the S tier is Captive. This is a darker horror themed book. You are exploring a creepy mansion because someone has kidnapped your daughter and you have to try to find her and get her back. And you can see the art is much moodier, much creepier than a lot of than the other books. Uh, there's again some violence, some gore in this one, but unlike Hold Up, it's not played for laughs. It's it's creepy. It's unsettling. I'm a big fan of the horror genre, so I think it's done really, really well in this book. I also think this has one of the best uses of an inventory system, uh, trying to pick up items along the way and having to decide, is this going to be important or not? Sometimes you might get stuck on that and you might make the wrong choice and that can feel bad, but it made me think of classic point and click adventure games that I really like. And there's also a time system in this one that's very interesting. Depending on when you choose to do things, there may be different outcomes, which is another thing that goes a long way towards making it feel like this is an actual place where things are happening whether you go to that page or not, which is a really cool feeling and an impressive thing, I think, to, to manage to pull off in just, a, in just a book, in just a graphic novel format. So that is my entire ranking of the first three seasons of the graphic novel adventures line, plus one from season four with Sherlock Holmes, The Beginning. There is also the Crusoe Crew and the Sherlock Holmes Baker Street Irregulars game. These are kind of spin-offs that are meant to be played multiplayer, but same idea, similar graphic novel style. I'm not including them in this rankings just because they're not officially really part of this the same exact line. They're kind of their own thing, but I do like those a lot as well and recommend those if you have a group that wants to play these rather than just yourself. But if you're a solo gamer, I think I love the series and anything that I said was from like S to B rank, in my opinion, is a good jumping on point. If you haven't read this, any of these books yet, and you're not sure which ones you want to pick up, or maybe you want to look at the ones that I said aren't for me, your town and your theme park. If those are your cup of tea, I think some people will really dig those books in particular. Uh, season four is set to launch in June on Kickstarter, and there are a lot more books in this series that have been published uh, in France that presumably are going to be brought over in the years to come. So maybe at some point down the line, I'll, I'll do an update to this video. But for now, I think this is a really good place just as a starting point if you haven't tried any of the books before. Now, if you watch to the end of this video and you're watching at the date of release, you have the opportunity to win this, the entire season three collection of the season three graphic novels, including this lovely slip case that holds all five of the books you can see right here in plastic wrap and everything. It's brand new, folks. Uh, perfect condition. If you want to try to win this, here is what you need to do. First, subscribe to our channel. Then in the YouTube comments down below, leave a comment letting me know your favorite book from the graphic novel adventure series, or if you haven't had the chance to play any, what setting would you like to see the books explore? Whether that be fantasy, sci-fi, horror, uh, maybe another public domain series along the lines of Sherlock Holmes. Leave that comment down below. And at the date shown on the screen, we will be randomly selecting one winner to take home this entire set of books. So after leaving your comment, you're going to want to check back 
and see if your comment was replied to after the allotted time period. And then uh, we will ask you to email us for further details so we can send this puppy out to you. Otherwise, uh, you can always go to Van Ryder Games website. Uh, we'll put a link in the description if you want to try to pick some of these up or stay tuned for their uh, what have been so far pretty much annual Kickstarter campaigns for the next set of books. I always am looking forward to them, even though some of them I don't love. Overall, I love the concept of it, and I always have a good time jumping into one of these books uh, fresh and experiencing it and seeing what kind of new tricks these various authors and artists have decided to employ. Let me know in the comments again uh, just uh, what you think about graphic novel adventure series as a whole, if you agree or disagree with my rankings, and we'll see what the future holds for this series. My name is Jonathan, and this has been Roll for Crit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching! While you're here, why don't you like the video, subscribe to our channel for more content, or you can check us out on Patreon, where if you support us, there are a lot of cool goodies like posting in our Discord channel. We've also got a podcast you can listen to. We have weekly guests, lots of board game discussion. Check that out as well.